Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite authors, Rita Sapetis, and doing a brief ranking and review of all of her currently published books at the time I'm filming this in 2022. So I discovered Rita Sapetis um, in 2020 and I have been a huge fan ever since. She is a historical fiction author who writes mainly for YA um, and uh, most of her books have appealed to both readers of YA and adult historical fiction. She tends to focus on often overlooked events in history. I'm gonna sound like a an absolute cliche, pretentious boomer, but I think it's very important for young people to read about history because as they say, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. I think it's important to have an understanding of history and patterns in history so that you can be more informed in modern day politics and recognize destructive patterns or otherwise um, problematic, I hate that word, otherwise problematic goings on in modern contemporary politics and parallels to historical events. Because the more history you know, the more politics you know, the more psychology you know, and the more human nature you know. And that can be a bit depressing, but also you need to know that humans suck. Rudis Apetis has published five books at the time I am posting this video. So I'm going to be doing a quick ranking of all of them. And for, for uh, before I begin this, I really like every single one of her books. So I don't have really, um, the ranking is just, you know, which one is the best of the best? So the first book I'm going to talk about is Out of the Easy. Out of the Easy uh, takes place in 1950s New Orleans and it follows a girl named Josie whose mother is a prostitute and so she's kind of um, has a has a difficult life. She basically just wants to get out of New Orleans and find and start a new life um, and, and go to college and do all this stuff and in, 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 and she gets entangled in this sort of mystery that starts going on in New Orleans. I guess the biggest thing that the reason it's on the bottom of this list, I remember enjoying it, but I also remember I also don't remember that much about it, which um, compared to her other books, it's just not as memorable. And it kind of has, uh, it's just not as memorable as her other books. That's really all I have to say about it. It's still a great book and I would recommend it. Okay, the next book I'm gonna talk about is The Fountains of Silence by Rita Spetis, which takes place in 1957 in Madrid, Spain. If you didn't know, Spain, after the Spanish Civil War, um, ended up coming under the leadership of, uh, of, of Francisco Franco, um, a fascist government under this uh, regime, uh, Catholicism was the religion of the state, and so uh, it was intensely enforced. And I remember I read this book before I became an atheist, um, and I was still uh, I, I I grew up Catholic, so I remember reading this and being very like very disturbed by the way that they that the that Catholicism was was used as a weapon in this um regime where people would have to go to confession if they um people would have to go to confession if they said something against the state or other things like that and i remember being intensely alarmed by that i actually have a review of this book on my blog which you can read so the uh, the thing about this one that i made me rank it a little bit lower was just that it's very character driven and it is a bit slow it's a bit like slow paced. And at the time that I read it, I wasn't really into slow paced books. And I don't know if I would feel differently if I, read it, if I read it now. I learned a lot of history from this book that I had absolutely no idea. I didn't even know that there was a Spanish Civil War before I read this book, which is, I think, a, a testament to the failing of the American education system. And by the way, if you want to learn about the Spanish Civil War, a really good book is George Orwell's memoir about it. What is what is the name of that book? Oh, hom um, Homage to Catalonia, okay? Read that book because George Orwell actually fought in the Spanish Civil War. He was really dedicated to the cause of setting up um, a, a, a leftist government there that he went from Britain to Spain to fight in the war. Um, and that was, he became disillusioned by the leftist infighting and the more like hardline Stalinist um, sector of the left-leaning groups, and that kind of um, inspired him later to 
write books like Animal Farm in 1984. Anyway, I'm going on a huge tangent. I'm <laughs> going on a huge tangent. But anyways, next we have I Must Betray You, her most recent book, which she published in, uh, in 2022 and I read in February of this year. So I Must Betray You takes place in 1989 um, in Romania. So it's about a boy named Christian, 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 Christian Florescu. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and so it has a lot of stuff about the negative effects of communism on Romania and the very repressive regime that was in place in Romania at this time. So I was honestly shocked when I read this and I had no idea that this was going on in Romania or that uh, this level of like 19, 1984 style like government was was happening in real life. It's one of those things where you read these these things and you're like, this this happened? This This happened to people? And like, I never heard of it. Like, it, it's kind of crazy. I, I did think that at some points the messaging of the book was a bit heavy handed. Um, although it is YA, like I felt like it was like communism bad, communism bad, communism bad. Um, and I mean, I am, not to get all political, but I am of the opinion that communism is not a feasible, um, a feasible economic system because of the way it always seems to not work out particularly well. Um, but I felt like, the, the the messaging of the book was like i felt like uh the way that that she was conveying this the anti-communist message was like very um it was very in your face which i mean i think that's a, i think that's like good for ya but that was one like slight criticism i had i i really liked this book anyways um, I really liked the excerpts from Christian's journal, which were sprinkled throughout the book as he writes a journal that he hopes to publish. Um, and I thought that added a lot of verisimilitude to the book. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I overall thought this book was really good. It was gripping, it was interesting, it taught me a lot. And it was, I mean, basically everything you want from a historical fiction novel. Now we have the five out of five star books. These are the books that cemented Reader's Society as one of my favorite authors. So. First, we have Stall to the Sea. So it takes place in January 1945, um, and it features four characters who are all trying to get out of Eastern Europe as Germany crashes and burns, and, Ru and Russia has started to kind of creep in and, 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 and take over everything. Um, and, it, and, it, and then the book centers around the sinking of the Wilhelm Gustloff, which was a ship that was taking refugees um, and moving them west away from the advancing Soviet army. Um, and it was mostly entirely civilians on this ship and it was, su it, 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 um, and it was torpedoed and, um, it was, it was more deadly than the Titanic, but nobody has heard of it because the Nazis covered it up. Yeah, so it follows four different characters, each of which have their own backstory and their own reasons for trying to get out of wherever they're going. So there is a Prussian man who is fleeing the Nazis with something that he stole from them. He, we have a Polish girl who is pregnant, who has a traumatic past that she's trying to escape from. We have a Lithuanian woman who is a nurse and is trying to get to safety. And then we have Albert, Albert, the most insufferable character that I have read for a bit. Um, he's a Nazi, he's a narcissist, and he's creepy as hell. So he's not very fun. I just remember being so horrified by this book, so mesmerized by this story, so shocked that I hadn't heard of this tragedy that occurred in, in, in World War II um, that nobody ever talks about. and. Um, doing more research into it, I realized it was because Germany did this entire cover-up over it, um, unsurprisingly. And I just remember being so, like, just so shocked that this this stuff happened. The the all, the writing was also beautiful. I need to reread this book, I think, soon. But I was just absolutely floored by this book in general. And then finally, we have the five out of five stars book, which is Between Shades of Grey. Um, also known as Ashes in the Snow. It's not Fifty Shades of Grey, although people always mix it up. It, unf it unfortunately came out the same year as Fifty Shades of Grey, which, I mean, that's just a horrible coincidence. So Between Shades of Grey takes place in, follows a girl named Lena um, in 1941. She lives in Lithuania 
and her family is deported by the Soviet government and sent to Siberia. This one, or Salt of the Sea, are both extremely dark, extremely tragic, focusing on p parts of history that are horrifying, like men many parts of history, but it kind of has like a minimalist style of writing, but that is nevertheless extremely powerful. It's the story stuck with me for so long, and I remember reading it and being like, just like, I can't believe this happened to people my age. Uh, Lena is 15, 15 in the book, and I was 15 when I read this book. And uh, I had never heard that this happened in Lithuania during the 40s. I had no idea about this. Um, I didn't know that uh, thousands of Lithuanians were deemed as enemies of the state and deported to, to, to Siberia. And I learned that the reason that nobody knows about this is that the people that endured this treatment were forbidden to tell anybody about what happened until 1955. They were forbidden by the government to speak about it to anyone, so nobody knew. Then there's the entire, like, um, the situation of these people in Eastern Europe where they have the Soviets and the Nazis and they're stuck in between and they basically are screwed either way and it's just like such a situation that, that, that I can't even imagine being in myself. I can't imagine what I would do if I was in this situation in this time. Um, and, the, and the characters felt so real, the story was so devastating. I like honestly i'm just horrified whenever i think about it's it's, it's like one of those things you think about history you're just like how could this happen how could this have been allowed to happen in like how could this have been allowed to happen so there was suspense but it was overshadowed by a general feeling of horror just absolute horror at this uh at these events and and, and the fact that this is based in real life this is based on real stories of real people this book is going to make you sad um and should uh but I think it's very worthwhile to read. All right, so those are all the books by Rita Sepetis that she has published so far. I think she's coming out with a new one, and I think she's writing a book with Steve Scheinkin, if I'm not wrong, and I'm really excited for that. Even though I've left my YA days behind me largely, I'm really excited to see her book with Steve Scheinkin. Like, absolutely so excited. So yeah, um, if you like this video, if you're interested in um, book, related discussions slash videos slash um and sometimes I do commentary and like random other things so if you're interested in that sort of stuff please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching uh see you in the next video hopefully